Uh, the Water Commissioner Buble, Ward, and Kaiser are present. So is there anything we'd like to add to the agenda? For me. Thank you. And if let the audience know, but some of the items that are more long term uh, will probably skip or shorten the discussion until we have a full commission. Anything that's time sensitive, we'll take care of. Comments from the public. We have signed up this online too. Um, please let me know if anybody online has to speak. I don't see any guests. In person, we have first Ms. Tammy Megra. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you back at the meetings. Yes, sir. Good to be here. I want to address your um, proposal for reinitiating the tax of taxpayers. I uh, a little upset about that. You know, last year when Next Energy took it upon themselves to quit paying their lease and reduce the price, and the port sit here for several months without making a move, that was a breach of contract. And then when the port decided to do something, it was voted in to allow Next to have a reduction in their lease payments. And now you want to tax the taxpayers because you're in shortfall. That's offensive. That was a breach of contract. That's like you running up a bill at the PUD and decide not to pay it. And then the PUD saying, oh, well, you know, we're just not going to make them pay. We'll just let them pay a cheaper rate per kilowatt. That's not how it works. And now because of poor management, management and poor decisions, you're in a pickle. And the property there at Port Westward, if they breached their contract, they should have been gone. And they could have opened it up maybe for possible someone else. We know Next lost their investors, the prime ones that they needed to stay afloat. Because if you listen to Odd Friday radio show, Mr. Eifert came on our show and talked about it. So for now, for you to increase the tax or bring the tax backs on the, ta on the taxpayers, it's kind of not a good look for you. And recently with the voting where everybody voted down all the levies, don't you think that the taxpayers are going to be a little bit upset with that decision? So I would think twice about what you're doing and maybe go back. For the court. And it, frankly, it was just stupid what you did and let them to get away with. And that's not good business practices. So I would urge you not to reinitiate the tax on the taxpayers to cover up for your boo-boo. And I would suggest that you make better decisions on your leases. And when someone doesn't pay, they're gone. That's just how good business works. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Howard Blumenthal. Morning, sir. Morning. Morning. Making quite a few years. Um, Howard Blumenthal, vice chair of the Marine Advisory Board. Some of the comments I'm going to make really do not represent their viewpoint, so I'm putting that disclaimer out there. Um, I'm not really sure where I stand on re putting your 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 tax back on it because. We already at the marina, uh, which I strenuously objected to, uh, raise the basic rate for somebody to park a car to walk the nature trail to go from three to ten dollars. It's like almost a three hundred percent increase. I don't really think that some of that is coming down fair when people now are paying the same rate as somebody that would come into the marina with a tandem axle boat trailer, a diesel crew pad duly pickup truck that won't even fit in our parking places and a single car that's trying to walk a nature trail has to pay the same rate as somebody in a giant, giant pickup truck that takes three times the parking places and weighs so much more to, to damage things. I wish it would have been a way in your pricing to have done things like if it was a tandem axle trailer, it's one price, 
single axle on other than go by the one you on the E1. Um, I, I also, at the last advisory board meeting, they started to float the idea a little bit. It's like, how long is it sustainable keeping that arena going there because of the dredging of this? And the cost of things going up millions and millions of dollars. And the fact that the channel, you know, people were talking about that big chunk of channel is a bit dredged. I really like the thought that was entertained. I don't know how serious it was that eventually maybe the marina or owned so much property closer to the former channel. And maybe eventually to slow down on how much we have to spend on dredging, we could be doing a new, better facility where we won't have to come up the base so far. The channel's deeper, I believe, the closer you get to them on the channel. That how much longer is the marina really viable for having huge amounts of people in bigger and bigger boats that need dredging? You know, uh, I mean, even years ago when I was kind of people were always so those are kind of my concerns at this time. You know, I, I, I uh, three quarters retired, so it really hurts when everybody keeps wanting to raise the prices. And a lot of our uh, things like St. Helens and stuff, uh, the provisions on our water bill, and then they want even more money by having police levy and all this other stuff. I don't believe in trying to get it from twice. It needs to just be a fee one place or the other. You know, and what they would be about the marina buildings went up for facilities and the facility. I always looked at the facility as being something that the port gave back to our community. But it's becoming so widespread, so many people from the out of our community come in to use it, that it's becoming a little bit of less user friendly for, for our citizens. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next is Mr. Paul Langner. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me here. I am Paul Langner, resident of the, the board district at 817 King Drive and Ranger. Um, since our last budget meeting, I've got a whole bunch of phone calls asking me what the heck you're thinking about and what you're doing. Um, I think in hindsight, all of us would kind of wonder when we, was it a really good decision that was made years ago to not, not collect the taxes and, and forego collect tax collection? Maybe we should have under levied or stuff like that, but hey, that's, that's, that's past. One of the biggest problems you have as commissioners and for the board staff is managing perceptions, and I addressed that before. Of the six calls that I received, five of the people were not only just upset that the court was going to put taxes back on or consider retaxing it, but it said that the court should act self sufficient and we should, be, we should actually surrender taxing authority. And I'm here to just address that piece, sir. Under ORS 777, your operating guide, you have sections 400 to 777, 430 to 777, 510. There are nine different specific sections of ORS 77 to talk about the importance of the ability to tax. ORS 777 430, 435, 440, 44, 47, 47, 470, 520. It goes on. There's, there's nine of them. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a bond counsel, I'm not a CPA. But a decision that, these, that some of these people want to go that the court should never collect taxes is going to affect the credit rating of this court. It's going to affect the credit rating of the county because the county is the backstop to the court. It's going to affect your bonding authority. So if you had this wonderful project that comes in that could do things and they want to use the court's authority to bond, you can't do it or it will impact that. And you start looking at the impacts, credit ratings, bonding authority, borrowing capacity, the port will be limited, and certain long-term growth loan and grant opportunities are going to be limited if you if you forego taxing. 
The taxes collected are but a fraction of the operating budget here, and we all know that that it does. It's not nobody's going to get laid off. There's not going to be any any changes that way. It's going to impact some internal operations. I would encourage you to reinstate the taxing. As I said the other day, I wouldn't be for under levying if you don't need it all. But I think it sends a signal that we have to keep this going. I'm worried that if you go for five and six and ten years down the road. People even understand that you needed to put borrowing authority back in, the taxing authority back in to actually make a commitment for a bonding authority or bonding capacity. I am of the opinion, and again, it is my humble opinion, there's one individual in this room or in this county. I would like to see the taxing authority, the money collected in taxes used for public access to the waterways. That's something that's fair to everybody in the taxing district. It's one of the things that people, when you do listen and you listen to people, they're always always clamoring, how do I get to the water? How do I get the kids out to play at the beach or something like that? I think perhaps the support staff has capacity and the commission has capacity to sit there and dedicate it to, maybe it's fixing access back to the beach at uh, in class time, at the boat launch ramp. Bring the sheriff's department in, it's $375 for six inmates to spend four hours whacking weeds there and making that boat launch better. Projects at the marina, absolutely. Just, if it's fixing parking lots or something like that, let's let's do it. But I think in front of the entire district, that money can be used used to benefit all of society, all of our people in our district, but also keeping the course fiscal responsibility intact for the ability to borrow and, and issue bonds. And again, so I I would finish with saying. I urge this commission to live in poor taxes and dedicate the funds to raise public access to the waterways of the public district. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Brady Preheim. And Helen Ryan. Uh nobody. Good morning. Brian. Uh Brady Preheim. Uh first, this is supposed to be a night meeting. And I object that you changed it because that was a scan out schedule. And of course, if Nick can't make the night meetings, uh, then he can resign. And uh, same for Brian Fawcett, frankly, because neither one of them are here. There's no one that sets up to that you know when you meet and at what time you meet, and you should show up. Just that simple. I also notice that you keep shortening your comment time. I only need 10 seconds to say you're an idiot. So go ahead and shorten it whatever you want. I don't care. Um, but uh, I do object. You don't really time them, so I guess it's a mixed message, but whatever. Um, obviously, you guys are struggling with money. One of the things I would suggest is that you look at cost cutting things and maybe not print uh, items that can be put on front and back on two pieces of paper would be wasteful. But that would be a good thing to do. That should be something easy to take care of. Um, I also know that you, the tax would raise about a half a million dollars. I know where you can get a half a million dollars. You could have charged next to the full lease. You've already lost half a million dollars this year. That would be 1.2 million. Your executive director, and said, shame on you, Sean, recommended giving that tax away and then comes to you and tells you that, oh, now we need money. Gee, I wonder who could have predicted that. Gee, that you cut at give next uh, cor corporate welfare and get them. So now you want to tax little 85 year old people that are living on reverse mortgages for their uh, $12 a year on their house so that you can give next corporate welfare. You didn't do next a favor. You've not been the port a favor. And um, frankly, what you've done is set a situation up that makes them look worse. Who's going to invest in a company that can't even pay their rent? So you didn't help anybody except screwed yourselves out of money that you should be getting. Um, I also know that um, the recent election was sent a very clear signal, no new taxes. Every single tax measure, some of which had been literally passed for 20 years, like 911, failed. I think that's a clear indication that people are sick of this, and now you want to bring up the tax? And frankly, I sort of agree with Paul in some aspects of that. I wouldn't mind the tax if you were going to use it for public access and you were not getting corporate welfare. So your corporate welfare to next can stop 
You can make the resolution right now and say, starting June 1st, we're no longer going to let you get away. You're going to start paying in June 1st. If you do that, fine. I'd be okay with bringing a tax back and using it for public access. But I certainly don't support it that you're going to give them corporate welfare and then want us to pay our $12 to, to, you know, a year to support them. Thank you. Thank you. Did anybody come on link this to I don't see anyone on my Zoom screen. We got everybody who signed up. Did we miss anybody? Mr. Ralph, come on up, Ralph, please. I just wanted to express my opposition to your tax again that you want to levy just because you can. Um, I would also encourage you to work harder on maybe filling the buildings, growing your growth, and a lot of these problems have been solved very easily. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the award for most dramatic presentation. <laughs> Thank you all. Best visual aids. Old business. Interesting. Timing is everything. So. And just as Sean is preparing, I'll say that the commission will not be voting. I had not planned to vote uh, on the tax today, but it'll be at the June 12th meetings. June 12th? June 12th. Yeah. Good morning, commissioners. That's not on. Yeah. I'm here this morning to recommend that the commission be sold the full amount of the port tax at eight cents per $1,000 of assessed value. Imposing the port tax is an investment in the future of the port. At our May 8th, 2024 budget committee public meeting, after hearing a budget presentation and seeing the full financial picture of the port, all five citizen members of the budget committee recommended imposing a port tax of four cents for $1,000 of assessed value. There are three basic reasons. There are three main reasons why the commission should vote to impose the full amount of the tax. First, we can maintain the infrastructure we already have. This would include ongoing maintenance at the marina, fire systems at all of our properties, Columbia City Dock, and of course, near Dock of Port Western. Second, diversify our revenue stream. Using the port tax to maintain our existing assets allows us to invest in revenue generating projects such as the new spec building at Penalty. It would also provide us with more financial flexibility. Finally, imposing the port tax would provide funds to allow people to better enjoy the waterways here in Columbia County. Slide. Significant funding is needed at Scapoose Bay Marine Park to keep it operation. Currently, the Scapoose Bay Marine Park operates at a loss every year. Dredging the marina is estimated to cost over $2.7 million currently. The commission is considering giving up the $500,000 in grant funds for the dredging project because we cannot afford to dredge. Additional funds from the port tax can be applied to help keep the marina afloat and usable for public. So, the slide shows the tax rate the corresponding taxes generated by port tax. The property tax assessed at $300,000, that is $12 per year assessed at four cents per $1,000 of value, or $24 per year assessed at the maximum rate of eight cents per $1,000. Slide. In 2020, the commission voted to set the port tax at a rate of zero. And while the port tax is a small percentage of the port budget in one year, it adds up over time. The last four years alone, imposing the port tax would have yielded approximately 1.9 million. Over the next 10 years, imposing the port tax would yield approximately $5 million. Slide. Uh, we've lost the Zoom. Let's say, hold on. Uh, it got a little excited. I think we're good there, right? It's come oh, it's back to meeting. Yeah, it's come back. Let's see. 
Of the 23 public courts in Oregon, every other court imposes a tax. The only exception is us. That's the 22 of the 23 Oregon public courts. Imposing the tax is authorized by law under RS Chapter 777. The other public courts impose taxes ranging from three cents to 61 cents per $1,000 of value, depending on the court. It's worth noting that not imposing the tax puts our court at a competitive disadvantage in relation to every other Oregon public court. Slides. In 2023, the Oregon Legislature passed a new law which requires us to perform state-mandated seismic upgrades to the Fort Westford Dock. The cost of this has been estimated at $29 million over the next 10 years. At the Railroad Avenue facility, ongoing environmental cleanup costs are now estimated at over $20 million. Finally, as we've discussed, numerous public, numerous public meetings threading costs at the marina have skyrocketed due to requirements imposed by Department of Environmental Quality for the EQ. Previously estimated at $2.5 million, dredging costs are now estimated to be 2.7 to 3.45 million. And if we cannot afford to dredge, we will lose the $500,000 grant, which was previously awarded by Oregon State Marine Board. The impact of saying no to a grant, which was already awarded, results in the port losing credibility if we want to obtain future grant funding from OSMD. Slide. The cost of public waterway access is shown in Trussell Beach, our facility here in Columbia City. We, we charge no fees currently for Trussell Beach yet, have to spend money for security every year. Using the poor tax to pay for these costs improves public access to the water. This colorful chart shows the capital projects identified as necessary by port staff. It totals over $60 million dollars over the next four years. It also includes the $29 million estimate to seismically upgrade the Port Westford Dock. Slide. According to the financial analysis completed in the 2024 strategic business plan, we currently only have the ability to do $20 million in capital projects over the next 10 years. If you compare that to the $60 million identified by Port staff, second goal there, over the next four years, you can see that we need more funding. Now, those all don't necessarily have to be done in four years. We just, but these are projects we've identified and kind of keep it kept shut on down. So, imposing the port tax would help with the lack of funding for things like the $29, $29 million in seismic for the Port Western, which we will be required to have a match at some point if we get a grant for, for, to do that work. As mentioned earlier, over a 10 year period, imposing the port tax at a maximum rate would yield approximately $5 million. That's a lot. The financial analysis in the strategic business plan recommended that the port tax would be imposed if the port were going to issue bonds or any additional debt. The port tax would be a specific revenue stream to use in order to back a debt such as general obligation bonds. The budget committee on May 8th discussed the possibility of doing a survey in order to find out people's opinions regarding imposing the port tax. While it seems that any survey would yield a no answer to imposing a tax, because nobody wants to pay more taxes. It's also important to remember that we've been discussing our budget in the poor tax and public meetings since 2023, including the proposed budget for 2023-24. In our public meetings, staff made recommendations to impose the poor tax on March 27th and April 10th of 2024. In fact, the poor debt budget has been a continuing source of public discussion since the dock incident at Port Western in November of 23. For example, in January 24, we discussed Budget issues in two public meetings related to canceling the construction of the maintenance shop. The port tax was also part of the strategic business plan process of public discussion starting back in August of 2023. That public process included feedback from the public about imposing the port tax. Imposing the port tax was identified as a strategic priority in the survey by some of the public participants. So, as the numbers show, Port tax is necessary to maintain our existing assets, diversify our revenue stream, and improve access to the public waterways. This will, this will benefit the citizens of the Port District and all of Columbia County as we create a positive economic impact on maintaining livability and adapting to change. Let me take your questions. Again, just more information, I'll to give this to Commissioners Fawcett and Sorber. Um, we have all the intel as well. Let me look to make your decision on June 12th. Motion for Sean. Well, I know you mentioned that you we've talked about this in our meetings here, but as we talked about in the previous meeting, in this room, having these discussions, 
with just a handful of people from the public here doesn't really meet the criteria of outreach as far as I'm concerned. You know, so the work that needed to be done in order to inform the public and take their comments and explain to them why it is you're asking to reinstate the tax, that should have been done in the public way, reaching out to the public, not expecting the public to come here. So I think what, from what you've heard, uh, you know, today, we've got the majority of people here who are against the tax. It's a big uphill climb, and I don't think we've done the outreach necessary to lay the groundwork for this. And I'm really sorry that, you know, we've got the vote coming up at our next meeting. And the public is not aware of what, the majority of the public is not aware of what we're up to. Our meetings are on YouTube. I would encourage you to share past ones with folks. Um, Gina's been sharing our agendas, so keep doing that. Um, yeah, but to speak to your, your point, yeah, as far as going out, somebody uh, gave the idea yesterday, Commissioner Fawcett, in fact, um, and down in Marina, asking those people as they're coming and going to do a gorilla uh, surveying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I would also add that and I wasn't a part of the decision to do away with the port tax. I worked here, but uh, I'm curious if we did a similar outreach as far as figuring out what people wanted. And I'm guessing the answer would have been, yeah, by all means, do away with the tax. But we made a similar case showing our infrastructure needs, which again, I'd like to hit on is aging. And that's all it does is get older, except for the day you install it. I mean, even, even on something like the airport, um, we may get, you know, federal aviation funds for 90%, but say on a $300,000 runway project, about $35,000 we've got to put up. And so there are, there are lots of things that just won't get done unless we have a clear financial stability uh, for the port. That's why in the last discussion, I'm... I am definitely in, in favor of this and we'll vote for it. I may be the only one doing it, uh, but vote for the tax as, as we go forward. I, we're too fragile right now to not um, want to keep that as a backstop, is my view. Any more questions for Sean? Thank you. Thank you to everyone who spoke today. And again, June 12th. Let's move down to new business. West side paving maintenance. I'm seeing it. Zoom is disconnected. It's been fluctuating in and out throughout the meeting. So hmm. need better internet connection. Yeah. I'm you? back now. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm back now. There are no guests on Zoom, though. Is that correct? Well, nobody's being deprived of. Good. Yeah. I see uh, six people. Really? That's just all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the airport. Oh, I read that wrong. I apologize. It is Lacey, and I should have known that. Airport. Get our glasses coming soon. Uh, uh, resolution 24-08, approval of the FAA Airport Improvement Program Grant, Westside Payment Maintenance, Scope of Work, this is phase two. Um, in 2023, the port worked with airport engineer Century West to prepare an FAA Airport Improvement Grant or AIP grant application. The application was awarded. Awarded and the port and Century Century West began phase two final design engineering and upcoming construction of the West Side Pavement Maintenance Plan. The project will include the south portion of Taxiway B to runway 33 and both hangar sequence on the west side. Following the approval of the resolution 2024-08, the port will open an invitation to bid. As mentioned in the scope of attached scope of work construction is expected to begin in summer of 2024. Are there any questions? Any questions? 
No, but good. <laughs> Yay. Yes, yes. And this is, we are kind of up against some weather constraints here. We're trying to get this done uh, this, this year yet. So. You bet. Move to adopt a resolution. It's been moved by Commissioner Ward, second by Commissioner Bubel to approve resolution 2024-08. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously, which you. would be required today. So. <laughs> Thank you, Lacey. Okay. Sorry for the mix-up. Gina, you like to come do the 2002 donations policy? Yes. So at the last meeting, good morning. The good morning it came up about what our current donation policy is here in the court. So, and perhaps it was um, suggested creating some sort of fund to fund donations to nonprofit groups. And I just wanted to share with you the current donation policy. Actually, this one's from 2000. The first one's actually from 2009. It was amended which is currently a no donation policy, except for um, exceptions that are direct benefit of port properties. And I just wanted to have more discussion on it, if there's something you would like to pursue. Pretty hard to do when we're missing two commissioners. Yeah. That's true, we can table this till next, if that's what we want. I, I think that's a good idea. Thank you for the information. And Elia. Supporting Columbia River Anchorage. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Don't scare us. <laughs> I'm before you today to ask that you support the court writing letter in favor of the U.S. Coast Guard's efforts to create federally designated anchorages at Crims Island. Port Westward Ice Island. This effort is supported by maritime organizations such as the Columbia River Steamship Operators Association and the Maritime Fire and Safety Association. The Maritime Fire and Safety Association is the organization that is uh, leads and coordinates into the responses on the Columbia River. In addition, river operators and service providers such as Shaver, FOSS, various ship agencies, ports. Columbia River pilots, the Columbia River bar pilots, as well as others, are supporting this effort. The Columbia River Channel was designed during the 1970s and used a 600 foot long, 85 foot wide, and 40 foot deep vessel for design parameters. Over time, the channel has been deep into 43 feet, and vessels over 1,000 feet now are routinely call the river, yet the channel width and anchorages remain the same. The increase in vessel size makes it necessary to create additional anchorages where vessels can wait for weather, tides, earth, and to anchor during an emergency. These anchorages provide a place of refuge with sufficient depth and keep the navigation channel clear. Vessels that go aground or swing into the navigation channel increase the risk of spills. It is important to note that all three of these anchorages have been used since 2016. The Port Westward Anchorage is used by vessels waiting for tides during the low water season or an emergency. Importantly, the Port Westward Anchorage is also the farthest place downriver where related vessels can safely turn around before reaching the story. There have been no incidents related to vessels using the Port Westward Anchorage, nor have there been any complaints about vessels at that anchorage. In the future, the Port Westward Anchorage would provide an ideal place for ships and barges waiting to berth at Port Westward. As I mentioned, these anchorages have been in use since 2016 without being federally designated anchorages. The advantage of the designation is that it would increase the U.S. Coast Guard's oversight of the anchorages, prioritize their use by commercial vessels. The federal designation would allow the installation of stern buoys. Currently, larger vessels must use standby tugs at these anchorages. That would no longer be necessary if there were stern buoys. In addition to saving monies, eliminating the need for standby tugs would provide environmental uh, benefits. For these reasons, we ask that you support the court supporting public comment in favor of this project. Letters of support are due by Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Why do they need standby tugs? 
You can pass that you can swing with swing the tow. So they stand by so they keep the ship the big ones swinging because their only point of contact with the ground is the forward anchor. They don't have stern anchors on those right. ships. Right. They would swing into the channel. Right. right. Yeah. You That's see a lot on the Lewis and Clark Bridge. There'd be three of them downstream, and you can see them just drifting in when they're short. Yeah. You know, the handies. Yeah, the short handies and Supermax is still swing, but they're within those design. You get an story out. The Panamaxes or mm -hmm. yeah. container ships don't generally go to Anchorage, but if they did, right. Mm -hmm. Stern buoys seem to work well in Rainier. They work wonderful. There's agents who always fought for them. They always wanted to get them big clients because they're a little bit cheaper. I think this is a consensus issue. So if the three of us yep. agree, please Absolutely. go ahead and proceed with your comments and we'll let the others know. Thank you. Any other new business? Executive Director. <laughs> Commissioner, as important of you is my report, and apologize for the lightness of it. Uh, it was an aha uh -huh moment this morning. I was like, oh, okay, that's right. That, that piece of Anyway, the electronic version will be more robust, I promise, uh, with some more calendar items for sure. Um, we do have a vessel coming in to Port Westward here um, very soon. What, what's the ETN? The 23rd. 23rd. Train today, vessel tomorrow down at Port Westward, renewable diesel. We're still working at Scaffolds Airport with the Moore Road contractors. Um, we're trying to get some, some infrastructure in the ground while the holes are open, including some conduit uh, for lighting along Airport Road that will just stub up and, and we'll run the electrical later when we uh, have the money and, and the need. Also, an eight-inch gas line will be ran down Airport Road and stubbed off at, uh, just past the gate so we can, uh, in the future, use that for any development out there. As you may know, there's a lot of propane tanks out there currently that are uh, the main source of fuel for the heaters and things, most of the building, so. Um, got a meeting set up with ORPET to discuss the preliminary enforcement notice that uh, they received, and I think, believe I sent that around to you all. Um, we'll be working closely with them, monitoring their progress. Um, similarly, here in Columbia City, the EQ had an unannounced inspection about two weeks ago. Um, and it was a stormwater person, not the air person, but he did make plenty of notes of things that he thought would definitely help the sawdust issue. So we've met with Steve Nelson. Uh, we talked about some, a few things as far as who can do what, the port versus them. Um, we're still kind of work out some of those things as we have some deferred maintenance items that we're working through with them as well. So more to follow on that. Railroad Avenue, we received the $2.6 million settlement from the insurance company that is going to a dedicated account for that site for the for the cleanup when we are to start that. So we won't touch that money except for counting the interest on it until time comes where we have to put shovels in the ground and start doing some things. Uh, and along those lines, we're just gonna be setting up a meeting with DEQ uh, with them uh, to talk about ways forward there and, and how we see that working out. So. Stay tuned there. I think that, yeah, the idea there was initially we we're going to say we'll pick a date, but then you suggested we'll just we'll just get a date. And Let's offer our standard for evening meeting date, yeah. but if it takes another time, whenever, wherever, whenever. Yeah, for a second work session. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty important issue for us. Absolutely. Um, upcoming events, I will be driving up to Clarkston, Washington for the PNWA summer, summer conference in June. Uh, we have Citizens Day in the Park in St. Helens, June 22nd, uh, and the Columbia County Fair and Rodeo, July 18th. We'll have a booth there uh, on July 18th, and Columbia City Celebration on August 10th, which is always fun. Again, this will be more robust to the electronic version, so stay tuned on that. Any questions, Shannon? Thank you. Everything we need in uh, commission required. There will be no need for an executive session, correct? That is correct. So, commissioner reports and we'll be done. It's Mr. Hubel. Um, really don't don't have much that I've done since since the last meeting of then continuing to review the budget and make sure I understand it. Yeah, the um, Agricultural Committee meeting was canceled on Monday. Uh, that means we won't meet again until July. However, there is work going on behind the scenes more to come. Does any of it involve the, the your island folks? And oh. No, their their project is uh, done. Yeah. That's too bad. Thank yeah, you. it's. 
that ever done. I just wrote down that. Uh, I guess quickly my comments on the port tax are that um, I was one who took pride in getting rid of it as a dividend for the activity of Port West or the money generated there and kind of the nuisance of the trucks and trains and ships and things. I thought it was a nice benefit for the for the county. I understand the, the discussion to as I talked with Mr. Bubel yesterday, I understand the good uses we could do with that. So I uh, Anytime we can not levy taxes is a good thing. So I will struggle with this. I, I'm happy to hear from anybody who wants to get a hold of me comment between now and the next meeting. Um, I am interested in the public access, and I think the marina is is an absolutely fantastic asset, but tax or no tax, we've got to get some questions answered before we make too many investments out there. Is, is the silting of the main channel going to stabilize and and only prevent deep draft boats, or is it going to continue to silt in and pretty soon only kayaks can go through there? And that, that concerns me quite a bit. I, I hate to invest a whole bunch of money in things that can't be used soon, but we don't know what those are. Clearly, the dredging for the kayak area will have a positive impact on the marina. We're not actually dredging for the kayaks, even though it kind of looks that way. Lots more information to gather there. And the only other comment was our, our public speaking times have not changed in many, many, many years. So other than that, our next meeting, June 12th. See you there. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.